What's up dude, it's Nick and welcome back to another Minecraft video. Now today we have a special one, because today I'll be reviewing HBM's nuclear techcraft mod. Now as the mod implies, this adds in nuclear weapons and pretty good armor, as well as some structures around the world. So I took the liberty of making sort of a underground nuclear bunker with the items from the mod. And these items you can find throughout the structures, which I'll show you guys later in the video. And for the first part, I made kind of like a door entrance using an airlock, and then I obviously used the nuclear silo base entrance. Go down here. This mod also adds in a sort of vault tech thing from Fallout, which I think is very cool. And at the end of the video, I also have a surprise to show you guys. I will be launching a couple of nuclear missiles. And I'm going to do that at the end because, well, if I don't, then my world might get destroyed. So we're going to start off in the items, armors, and tools area. Now this mod adds in a lot of armor, like a lot of it. So I'm going to try to do this quickly. So the hazmat sets, there's a bunch of hazmat sets, will protect you from radiation and the high performance or the... Um, Liquidator has better performance than the rest of them. So I'll just show you guys how to craft right this hazmat set. So the hazmat cloth, you're gonna need hazmat cloth block. And craft this. You will need an assembly machine. I'll show you how to get, how to use this later. The defense one, gonna need hazmat hazmat cloth like this. Same for the rest of them. High performance, gonna need lead forms cloth, gonna need insulators, gonna need polymer. And then there's a lot of stuff in this mod. I'll show you all how to do this later. Later, we're gonna need insulators, empty gas tanks, lead clothing, and then high performance hazmat suits. And there are also set bonuses, which for this one you get a damage modifier of 0.25 against explosions, and then a damage threshold of 1.0. And then there's also fire proximity, which is personally my favorite because I tend to fall in lava too many times, which makes you fireproof with the whole set on. So you're gonna need fire proximity cloth, which is orange wool. Uh, string, and I think phosphorus or bromine powder. You're also going to need a collect cyclotron to use this. I won't be showing, going over how to show how to work every structure in the mod because then the video will be too long. Unless you want me to make part two, which if you do, then tell me in the comments down below. And the best gear in this mod, I believe, is the. Uh, trying hard not to butcher the name. Uh, Shrividium Tres. Sherbidium uh, set. We're gonna need Sherbidium, Star Metal, and then Ionized Particles. Now to create this, you need a Fusion Reactor. I'll show you how to do this later. Star Metal, you're gonna need Star Metal around Cobalt. You're gonna need Cobalt ingots. You can find this in the ground. You can craft Star Metal by using Ignite Powder and a Blast Furnace, Saturated Ingot, and a Meteorite Powder. You can find Meteorite Powder from Meteorites around the world. You obviously know how to get lava. Saturnite, you're going to have to craft this in a chemical plant. I'll show you how to craft this later. Then these are the power armors. Now to craft this, you're going to need you're going to need cinnabar, ink stack, or any sort of black dye, and then a steel ranger chest plate. So you're going to need dash motors, you're going to need petroleum, advanced alloys, and then iron shot armor plating. Now you're going to need iron plate, saturnite, and then titanium armor plates. So this mod makes you work really hard for the armor. You're obviously going to need to melt some alloys for this, and you're going to need coal powder, minecraft grade copper, steel ingots, and then you'll get advanced alloys. Okay, the file chest plate. It's just the same thing for these, except in boot form, so I'll just go over the other ones then. You need dash motor, closed demon core, and then foul armor plating. You need yarnite billets, and then dash ingots, as well as forge meteorite ingots. Got a DNT. I think this is the most powerful one out of all the power armor. So, DNT armor plating. We need heavy chain steel and dark singularities. Got this. You're gonna need four denatronium uh, compound plates, spark tickle capsule, and then foul armor plating. Denatronium ingots, spark blend, and then dash. Yeah, I recommend installing not enough items or just enough items for this mod. It will make your life a lot easier. And these also have their own um. Set bonuses, which this one grants strength, pace, jump boost, jump boost, and then this also notifies all damage for fall and monoxide, and a bunch of other things. But these 
are um like kind of blurred out. So like armor dot fast fall and fix you fall faster, I'm pretty sure. Rocket boots allow you to fly, sort of. Armor dot ignore limit, I think allows you to ignore the armor value of mobs, but I'm not sure. Alright. And CMB steel, can you do this? Craft CMB steel powder. I think you can also craft this somehow. Oh, but yeah, here we go. CMB steel furnace, you're gonna need power, some sort of liquid, and then advanced alloy, and then magnetized stunks in. That was a mouthful. Alright, so for the armor, there's more armor, of course. Security, steel, titanium, D45, cobalt set, star metal set. Steel Ranger, HEV Mark IV boots, and then Euphium. Security, you will need steel plates, insulators, and your polymer bar, black sand glass pane, steel plates, you're gonna need steel ingots, and this machine. Steel, steel ingots like this, you can also craft these, I'm pretty sure. Yep, iron and coal. Titanium, just titanium ingots like this. Pretty simple. Then T45 power armor. I think this is also from Fallout 4, or just Fallout in general, not much Fallout 4. Two motors, one titanium armor plate, titanium chest plate, two gas tanks, and then more armor titanium armor plates. You need cobalt like this. And I'm skipping these because it's just the same thing, except in boot form and then helmet form. Star metal, you're gonna need star metal. I already saw you do that, I have to craft that. Steel Ranger. Oh, here we go. You're gonna need military grade circuit board tier 4, iron shot armor plating, two polymer bar, MG, M65 Z mask, and then advanced alloy. Craft this, you're gonna need insulators, brown stained glass, and gas mask filter. You're gonna need two activated carbon filter and an iron plate. You're gonna need two overclock circuits and the lapis lazuli powder. Craft this, you're gonna need to go in here and make it. Now, it will show you how to craft all these things if you just click R on the keyboard in um, not enough items or just enough items. So, I recommend having that installed. HEV set, you're gonna need dash motors, two polymer bars, titanium chest plate, and reactive armor plating. You're gonna need four advanced alloys. One titanium armor plate and four tons of wire. Then Euphium. I'm pretty sure this is one of the most powerful armors. Broken pocket watch. Gonna need four lapis lazuli, four Euphium ingots, and then a clock. You need some compound. Oh, yes, it is. So you need another star to craft this one. Four Euphium. And it gives you only one. So you need about 24 nether stars to craft the full set. Great. Uh, acetine powder, and then you four you feel that's right, yeah. Oh my gosh, that was a mouthful. One of the swords. There's a lot of swords here. Um, I won't be going all of them. Well, sure, why not? Redstone, you're gonna need two blocks of redstone. It's sick. That's six point five attack damage. Great sword, you're gonna need four nether quartz, two iron, two gold, and then a stick. Ultra hard steel sword. You guess you can't craft it. High frequency, you can't craft that either. You need two advanced alloy ingot to make the advanced alloy sword. CMB steel, you're gonna need CMB steel like this. Sorry, I keep sweating by the way. When I talk fast, it happens. Worker's alloy sword, you're gonna need dash ingots and a stick. Cobalt sword, you're gonna need two cobalt cobalt stick, decorated cobalt. You're gonna need two cobalt swords, co two cobalt ingots, cobalt sword, then two forged meteorite ingots. Meteorites uh, fall from the sky periodically about every 36,000 ticks. You can change that in the config, config files. Star Metal Sword, you're going to need two Star Metal Ingots, Decorated Cobalt Swords, and two Cobalt Ingots. Now, this is the best sword in the game, Straight Beam Sword. 151 attack damage, you need Block of Stradium, Polymer Bar, and then it works well. Now, the reason it's so expensive is to craft Straight Beam, you actually need to, um... Craft... Uh, you can use... Well, you don't need actually need this. But to craft uh, some items from the mod, you're going to need the fusion reactor, which I'll show you guys how to do that soon. Titanium sword, two titanium, one stick. Steel sword, two steel, one stick. Meteorite sword, two meteorite, two gold plates, which is just, yeah, forged. And the stick. Now, these are all meteor swords, except they're um, heightened to make, like, better versions. So I'll just go over the most powerful one. Which is meteorite sword, baleful. And you actually can't craft these. Well, you can't craft these anyways. You can use an anvil to use these. To craft this, you need iron. It's actually less expensive than um, a vanilla anvil, which is weird. Sort machined. You can't craft all these. Yeah, here we go. 
We're gonna need a lot of things for this. But I think you might be able to find this in dungeons. If you do, then congratulations, you have the most powerful sword in existence. Tools. Vance Alloy. Three, three Vance Alloys ingots. Two, six. Feel free to skip this part if you want to. CMB Steel ingots. Three CMB Steel. Two, six. Three Dash ingots. Two, three, six. Cobalt ingots. Three Cobalt ingots. Two, six. Bismuth pickaxe. Gonna need four Bismuth ingots. One Star Metal pickaxe. Mira ingots. And a Tungsten Bolt. Crap, a Tungsten Bolt. You're getting two Tungsten ingots. Multi pickaxe. Gonna need four Mechanic Gems. One Star Metal pickaxe. One Meteor ingot. And then one Tungsten Bolt. These CMB steel workers, all these are just crafted with their alloy. Advanced alloys, obviously, get that. So I'll just skip those. Trabium, these are obviously crafted. Oh, they're crafted differently. Okay, so you're going to need workers' alloy, then Trabium shredder blades, which is going to need four Trabium plates, and then one Trabium ingot, and then two polymer bars. Market gardener, you're going to need two cloud residue, one block thorium, two vo photovolcanic plates. One steel shovel, two insulators, and then one Australian ink. Surely you make it. Oh my lord, that was a mouthful. Alright. Now for the items. Alright, wait. Hold on. Sorry. Alrighty, I'm back. I had to go get my mouse charger. Now, this is not half of the things in the mod. So I'm just going over a few. I won't go over all of them, this is just a select few. So, awesome is every good effect for 50 seconds. And you will get nausea paired with this. So if I use it, let's craft the craft first. We're getting 4 sulfur, 2 plutonium 239 ingots, an empty syringe, and 2 plutonium 238 nuggets. Not nuggets. Well, yeah, nuggets, not ingots. Craft this empty syringe, you're going to need iron plate, empty cell, iron bars, craft the empty cell, you're going to need six steel plates and then two of any stained glass. Click, I will get amazing buffs, but I will also get nausea. But that only lasts a bit, so... I'd say it's worth it. And there's also antidote, which removes all poison effects, poisonous injection, which will kill you, meta X, resistance 3 for 4 minutes, psycho, uh, you're going to need four nether quartz and a metal syringe. Doctor's bag, full here regardless of max health. Right away removes 140 rad, removes 3350, then removes 1000. Now rad you can get from going near nuclear crash sites where missiles have landed that have nuclear warheads. And some of them spawn naturally, but you can also create them yourself by detonating a nuclear missile or bomb. And rad X increased radiation resistance by 0.4 for 3 minutes. Reverses mesothemia with power of a bestos, and then removes negative effects. Stealth advice to play off of the stealth boy from Fallout, I'm pretty sure. Toxic soapy water. You can actually um, carry this on your person, and it will inflict poison on the attacker. Heart pieces, which the best one you craft. It's a fab heart, which is, gives you plus 30 health, which is applicable to chest plates and slot special. It's also black diamond. Bottle of scrumpy, which gives you a revive. Wild Pegasus Drive, which gives you three revives, and then the Fabsoul's Vodka, which gives you near-infinite revives. And this is a Supply Drop Requester, which right-click for Request Supply Drop, and Lead Apples, and the Scrabium Apples. Now, I'm kind of curious to see what these do. So, yeah, I was going to say. I think Lead is actually not good for you at all in any situation. So, I don't know why you would craft that, because I think it requires Lead Blocks. Yeah, it does. Let's see if this kills me. Oh no, it's really good actually. Oh my gosh. Ugh, now my inventory is messed up. Alright. Give me a second to organize this.
All right, and we're back. So yeah, that's it for the items. I'm just gonna grab some milk real quick because the effects are good. Does it give me infinite? Oh my god, it's forever. Oh, there's milk. Okay, there we go. I got a missile pack. Now on to the machines. This is what I promised I got to show you. Now the first machine we're going over is the chemical plant. Now every machine, well, first of all, to craft this before we go over the basics for machines, you're gonna need the assembly machine. Sure, probably I should probably look at this first. Craft this, you'll need two motors, one basic circuit, two copper blocks, box of steel, and three clay clay sass. Three stained clay gray glass. What is wrong with me today? Apologize. Now for this. It, once you place it down, it will require battery power and a uh, assembly template. You can find templates in, dun in dungeons, and you cannot craft them either, so that's tough luck. Just place it in here like this, and the arrow will go away. You also need a battery. There are different types of batteries, but I'm using an infinite battery for showcase. And you can also able to use upgrades, which will increase the speed of the machines. Now, if I just put these in here, just for show, power saving. And then let's say, uh, what do I need again? Glass. So, this assembly template, you need to craft a fuse, in which the output is what it gives you once you have all the items, and the input is what you need to put in. So, we need two steel plates, one glass pane, and an aluminum wire. So, I just put all these things in. Really not that complicated, but after a while, not a while. Yeah, fuses are used for large reactors, and after a bit, it will give you your items. Now, if I obviously take these away, they will, um, the, it will obviously go slower, but you can also craft these using the same machine, but. This is MK3, so the MK1 won't go nearly as fast as the MK3, but, yeah. It also has a cool animation when working, but I forgot to show you it, sorry. Infinite battery here, the template goes here. It will also tell you what template it is, so this is a chemistry template. And this, unlike other ones, needs water, so you just put your water source. Which I don't have water, so I'll just grab a water tank. And it will start filling it up with water. And you will need water. This is a concrete production, which we need gravel, sand, and then 2,000 uh, millibuckets of water. Grab the center here, start crafting it to four copper, not copper, concrete. And you can use this for building, it's pretty blast resistant, I think. And this is the animation. So, all of these machines here have really cool animation, which I just like to stare at because it looks so cool. So, we'll leave this running for now. And after about a couple minutes, you'll get full stack. Now, let's move on to the nuclear reactor. Now, this will come with a few risks, but also benefits. So, it won't generate power outright, it'll generate steam, which you can connect to a steam engine to produce power. Now, I'll need water and coolant, so we will get another heavy tank of water. This is obviously... Apparently, you can craft this. Oh, huh, you can actually craft this. I thought it was created with an item. That's useful. And coolant. Without this, your reactor will explode into a big fiery mess. Probably the size of this base. So without coolant and water, this will go boom. So just put that in there. And to craft to operate it, you're also gonna need uranium. And let's go get some uranium. It is quite slow to put it in, so we'll just grab a bit. Here we go, now we have uranium, and after the depleted uranium, once it uses it up, you'll need a uh, empty fuel rod to put it in here when you'll get a fuel rod full of depleted uranium. And let's turn this bad boy on. Okay, here we go. You have to drag the slider up. And the coolant and, and water is actually keeping it cool. 
Unfortunately, this one has no animation. That's kind of a bummer, but it is generating steam. And you can connect this using pipes. I am using the Ender Fluid Conduit from Ender IO. I'll link that mod in the description below. And connecting it to a steam engine. Now, this will uh, pump in steam, and then it'll put it, it'll generate power for it, and then it'll put it into any sort of power source you have connected. So I have a Shrabian battery. Now, it will take quite a while to, um, obviously generate the power, because it's industrial, not, uh, Leviathan, which there is another. But, you can actually put in fluid IDs in here, so if you want, uh, fluid IDs, right here. You can actually put in ultra dense, super dense, dense steam, which will generate more power depending on what you have. And yeah, that's about it for these. Now this, oh wait, you can actually, um, if you don't want to continue with the steam monitor, your um, reactor, you can shift right click with a reactor remote sensor to craft this. You need uh, five, four lead plates, two military grade circuit board, two tons of wire, and then magnetron. Magnetron you're going to need. Two advanced alloy plate, one advanced alloy, one tons of wire, and one heating coil. I was going to need two advanced circuits and gold powder. I was going to need a hand circuit, red copper wire, and a gold powder, and an insulator. Crap, this you're going to need. Oh my lord, okay. You're going to need a lot of things. But anyways, shift right click, and then you're going to want to craft yourselves a reactor remote control block, which is four dutch compound plates, two polymer bars, one military grade circuit board, one glass pane, and then one block of redstone. And it'll say record thing not found, so you're going to have to insert this right here. And then it'll show you the status of the reactor. Reactor status on. You can use this once it runs out of fuel or coolant, and it'll automatically shut it down and prevent it from exploding into a fiery mess. And once these two indicators turn on, which means you are out of water or coolant. And it'll show you the steam level, the whole heat, and the fuel that it has. Steam buffer full, which means that it's full of steam. Which is not anything to worry about. It won't explode. You can also turn it off from here and back on. And turn it off again to prevent it from accidentally exploding. You can place this anywhere in your world and it'll uh, monitor it from over here. So you don't have to constantly go back and forth. And there's also another block down here that I wanted to show you. Got that. I need night vision down here. This is the fusion reactor. Now, this is the most expensive and complicated structure on the mod. I had a really difficult time setting it up. But you will need a... This is your main way of crafting stray beam armor. Let me just... How do I... Sure. There we go. You're gonna need ionized particles. Now, this is where you get the ionized particles. You need deuterium, tritium, plasma. Now, for the plasma... Well, first of all, for this, you're going to need ultra-dense steam in the water, which you can pump out through tanks that you can find in the mod. Any sort of pipe will work as long as it connect to the, as long as it can connect to the tanks. And then this right here is called a plasma heater, which will uh, heat plasma up and then combine it into one singular compound. So if you take tritium and then deuterium, you're going to get deuterium tri tritium plasma, which is really cool. And then you can pump it out through the back or just connect it like this. And then once you turn the reactor on, it'll fill up. And you're going to output it through tanks, and then the um, fluid ducts that you're going to need. It's pretty simple once you set it up. You're going to have to put it into the back, though. And you're also going to need to supply a power source. You don't need fluid IDs for this. It'll just automatically input it through the two spots. Now, the fusion reactor, to craft this, to craft it's a multi-block structure, which I'll... The game actually shows you how to craft it, and there is a wiki, so you can like research items and stuff, which is where I which is where I got the information. So I'll link that down below in the description. Now to use this, you're gonna need a vaporwave, not a vaporwave, a future reactor blanket. I just prefer to use a vaporwave because it looks cooler. However, the vaporwave is a creative only item. There are other blankets though, such as the tungsten dash and then chlorophyte met metallized future reactor blanket. Each of these have a different melting point, and then durability. I just think Vapor Whip looks cool, though, so I put it in there. And turn this bad boy on. It will use up a lot of water, so make sure you have a steady supply, or else the reactor will blow up. It won't blow up as bad as a nuclear reactor, it'll just destroy the structure itself. 
And if you're lucky, you won't you lose the madness. But as you can see, it will fill up with deuterium and tritium paste. And after a while, it will um, create ionized particles. It uses up above water a lot more than it does alternate steam, so keep that in mind. And another use for this is that you can actually craft a... I don't know if it's uh, you need an empty quad rod. No, you don't. But you can actually place certain um, rods in here, and it'll fill it up with the things you have. Oh, here we go. Ionized particles. And you can craft this for this tree and plush plate. With this on, I'm pretty sure you are basically immortal. I might be overselling it just a bit, but you're really strong with it on, is what I'm trying to say. So let's go back up here. And let's go check out the custom missile lab, which you can actually create your own missiles in this game, which I think is really freaking cool. So every missile will need parts, and there are a lot of these parts, trust me, there's a crap ton. So they are right here. Some are not compatible with others, which you can tell if this light is still red once by the time you put it in. Now you can assemble it like this, and every um, missile will need a warhead, which the type is thermonuclear, which is the biggest explosion in the mod. So if I just craft it like this, here, here. All turn green, but you need a missile targeting circuit. Now, every targeting circuit you can input as many as you want, but they all have a different inaccuracy. Uh, tier 5 has a 0% chance of missing, tier 1 has a 10% chance of missing. So, still fairly low for tier 1, but I recommend using tier 5 if you have the resources, because it's tier 5, so it's obviously pretty expensive. Now, place in this, and you can't actually craft it, and this is what I mean, show you guys. If it's red, you can't craft it, so, gotta have to find another one. Alright guys, so I finally found out what I need to do. That was... Yeah, so be careful when crafting the custom missile parts, because all of them are nearly incompatible with each other. But I think I might have just been being dumb, so... Yeah. Okay, yeah, so if you press this button, no power required, it'll create your custom missile for you. Get rid of all these real quick. There you go. So you can actually place it down a preview. I'm not gonna launch it, obviously, but now oh, okay. So you need a different launch pad for these, but I'll show you how to do that soon. Okay, and I think we are ready to go in here. Now, this mod does add in some sort of, like, defenses and stuff, so I'll just sh show you guys real quick what I mean. Here we go. Now, if I summon in some like, easy zombies, uh, those are heading for me, and these on. And down here, there are withered spikes and... Not withered spikes, well, there are withered spikes. It's also Tesla traps, which will shock the mod, I'm pretty sure. Yep, there we go. And... There are also turrets, which I'll show you guys how these work, too. And they absolutely annihilate mobs. The Tesla traps do hurt you, by the way, so be wary of that. These are also the vanishing um, blocks from the Twilight Dimension, so I'll put that on in the description below again. And there won't- these actually won't fire unless there's mobs in here, so I'll just grab rid of some zombies real quick. There we go. Now, if you get in the way of their line of fire, they will shoot you down. And you can actually mod these to target yourself, which- why would you do that? I'm not sure, but let's turn these off for now. And there we go. Put it back to peaceful. Now let's just see what they've done. I shall go over the crafting recipes. These are very, uh, I would say, work in progress. So here you can choose 
um, what they target. So you can choose if they target yourself, pigs, creepers, or I don't know what this is, but I like to have it equipped. It's not creepers, mobs. To make them run, you'll need power and turret ID trip graphics. You need six gold wire, two overclock circuits, and then one polymer bar. And then for this specific turret, you will need the depleted uranium 235 box of ammo, which needs eight steel plates around the depleted uranium quad fuel rod, which you can obviously get these from the fusion reactor. But it will instant kill most mobs due to the high damage output. Craft the turret itself, we will need a lot of crap. So you'll need a Leon energy storage block, 16 steel ingots, 4 pollen bars, 2 motors, military grade circuit board, dash motor, 32 grit industrial grade copper, 1 high tech weapon mechanism, and then 1 lithium ion battery. You'll also need the blueprint for it as well. Now to craft these, you will need 1 energy storage block, 16 steel ingots, high speed seals, 3 motors, Military grade circuit board, tier 3 seal pipes, advanced rifle mechanism, iron, and an iron crate, and you'll also need the uh, blueprint. Now, these are loaded with 0.50 BMG rounds, which you'll need them to operate them actually. And if I search these up, there's a lot of different types of ammo. And some of them do more damage than others, like this one right here, I think. Explosive, yeah. And then chlorify increase damage increase where not penetrating. And they do home which I'm confused as to why how or how bullets would home, but and this is actually pretty dangerous. It fires a high damage round at someone's a small meteorite. Right? Now I did try this and this will ruin your world, so please don't use it. Unless you have a really good computer, which I don't, so So yeah, the ones I'm using are the star metal rounds, which do more damage than regular ones. This mod does have guns, satellites, and other stuff. But if you would like to see me review those, please let me know down in the comments below. Yeah, and there is also some other things I would like to show you. Such as the force field. That's right, there's a force field which can be used to deflect rockets back at the attacker. Not back at the attacker, but... Place it somewhere in... There, there it is. Force field emitter. Now to craft this, you're going to need... Oh crap, you're going to need... 10k to 1020 hertz transformer. You're gonna need military grade circuit board, tier 5, a meter health upgrade, meter radius upgrade, motor, 8 advanced alloy plates, dash compound plates, 6 golden ring coils, and then 12 4000k high temperature superconducting coils. You'll also need the blueprint and power. Now, this is very simple how you use it. So, you just need a power source, either upgrades, which will increase the health of the force field and the range. Press this button to turn it on. You'll know it's on by this animation right here. Cover it up with whatever if you're choosing. And you won't notice the difference at first, but if I go into game mode 3 real quick, you'll notice a giant ring around us. And this will block most uh, missiles, but some missiles like the Doomsday Missile and the Tectonic and most nuclear missiles it won't be blocked because... There's no full force field in game that can obviously block that amount of damage. So, yeah. But most missiles, this will block against most missiles, don't worry. But some missiles, like fragmentation missiles, will give it a hard time because it obviously splits into multiple missiles on impact. So, yeah. And I guess we'll just go over the missile silos and how to launch missiles. Now, I set up three missiles, missile silos, and to launch a missile, you're going to need the missile itself and a launch pad to craft the anti-ballistic missile, which this missile is used for de-tiering other rockets or missiles off their course, which will best technically collide with other missiles and then blow them up to prevent them blowing up your base. You'll also need a high-explosive missile to craft this one, and then a military grade circuit board, tier 3. Craft high explosives, you're going to need small warheads, small fuel tanks, small thrusters, and titanium plates, six of them. And then a military grade circuit board, you're going to need one of them. And also you're going to need the uh, assembly thing. Craft the missile launcher, you're going to need injury storage, 12 steel plates, 2 polymer, 4 steel, and then 2 overclock circuits, as well as a missile launch pad. The blueprint, obviously. And to launch them, you're going to need a redstone signal. Um, and... I prefer to have it, like, somewhere far away, so I can, like, see the rocket go up. 
And then that's it. So to obviously test these out first, I will go to a test missile area that I have set up. You also need a long target designator, which to use this, you will need a crafted first of all. You're going to need, still need two steel plate, overclock circuit, short range target designator, and then two redstone. This is a long range. Short range is two, one steel plate, four iron plates, and then two advanced circuits. Long range is obviously farther range. You're going to shift right click. It'll set that position, and then you'll just place it in here. Or whatever. And this is the strong incendiary missile, which I'll probably start off with a high explosive. Now the radar, I'll show y'all how that works. Ugh. It's lag. Oh, nope, not lag, I forgot to do it. And if we go to the radar base and right click on this, you'll see the tier 1 missile approaching our destination. As well as the anti -ballistic, ballistic missiles stationed. Now, since we have our first four skilled up, we wait a bit. It'll bounce right off, and it'll go in the opposite direction. And tier one missiles usually won't do much damage against it, but if I use something like a, I'm not gonna do any neutral warheads. I don't know. So let's go back to the missile rack. Test missile rack. Here we go. Place the strong incendiary missiles in here. Copy this. Strong HE missile in here. Get our base. I'll show you guys how to craft this soon. You'll see both tier 2 missiles approaching our destination. The higher the missile tier, the faster it approaches, so be prepared quickly. Now, if I'm correct, then they will also just bounce straight off. So this is, the radar is really good for like servers and stuff, otherwise I don't really know, with other players that would try to attack you, otherwise I don't really know why you would have it in your base, other just like for show. And the anti ballistic missiles, obviously you'll want to keep as a fail safe in case one of your missiles fires off accidentally. And I will show you guys what it is like. Actually, this is redundant. Test missile rack. Go back here. I will let off a... I hope this works. I haven't tested this yet. But if this doesn't work, then I'm going to be sad. Nuclear missile. Pretty well known. Will destroy your world. Nuclear warhead, large fuel tank, large thruster, 20 titanium plate, 24 steel plate, 16 aluminum plates, military grade circuit board, tier 4, and then nothing is not an item, you just don't place anything in those slots, obviously. I actually thought it was an item at first, but we're not going to talk about that. So you also need the blueprint. And it's a pretty large missile. 3, 2, 1, go. And we're going to need to go to the anti ballistic missiles. Fire off. Whoa. Huh. Well. Let's go to the rack. Guess we'll go to the radar base. Tier 4 missile approaching, which is obviously all nuclear warheads are tier 4. And the force field did deflect it. I'm surprised. It did deflect it. Alright. Now that will go explode somewhere else. Hopefully not too close to our base. But I'm as why these didn't work. Oh my god! Oh my god! Okay, so we're obviously gonna need to place some stuff in here. So long range charge detonator, and then now it will work. Should not have more active first of all when I go in here. Now these will go off at other missiles and then explode at them, so. Let's go back to the... Now since I like destruction, I'm going to place one of the most powerful... Like missiles. This is not the most powerful of the radius, but the most damaging to your world. I'll show y'all what I mean once I launch it. At the end of the video. So let's place it on here. 
It looks scary, which is fitting. I'm gonna keep the force field up just in case it fails. <laughs> Watch that. It's gonna go off the radar. See it approaching. It's missiles. It should work. I don't know why. They're... There we go. Now, if I did this correctly, yep, completely gone off the radar. So you're only gonna need one to counter any sort of missile, but I don't think it would explode in the sky. Yeah, no, the missile just disappears after you're done using it. Also, uh, the missiles, be careful, because they will destroy your world. Like, over here, this was a result of a nuclear missile being launched off over here. It destroyed the entire area, left behind some residue, which this will damage you, this green area stuff right here. And there's actually nothing left to show you guys in here, so why don't we just... Okay, move on to the structures. Now, the aftermath is a result of a tectonic missile or nuclear missile being set off. Now, if you go in this area, you'll get uh, contaminated, which will... is like poison times 55, so stay away from that. Gonna check these out real quick. Realization. This is an area surrounded with barbed wire, and you break the door down. You'll find some plugs, energy storage blocks, not plugs, and a structure full of satellites. Now this is where you would find most of the blocks, as well as the antenna top. And these are pretty much decoration blocks, so you don't need them. Oh, here's the structure that I missed. These are chlorine geysers, and they spawn naturally throughout the world, and they every so few minutes they like splurt up chlorine, which will damage you if you get close enough to the blast, so friendly reminder to stay away from those. Here we go, this one should explode soon. Go. You'll get Wither 2, Blindness, Poison 3, Mining Fatigue 3, and Slowness 3. Slowness 2. So yeah, you will most likely die. It is chlorine, so drink some milk. Alrighty. Now, get these ready. Ugh, I asked for that. There's also a spaceship, which will spawn periodically that they're working. You can also change the config files to um, make it so that structures spawn more naturally, like spawn like more throughout your world. And throughout this, you'll find a lot of blocks like reactor chambers, superconductors, conductive oil, coils, not oil. There are, you can refurbish this into a house, which I think would make a pretty cool one at that. There's also guns in the mod, which I make a, I might make a part two if uh, you guys want to see that. So once again, if you want to see it, leave a like, subscribe, and then post a comment on the video saying I would like to see part two. And yeah, some of them have better quality uh, models than others. Some of them are just... Yeah, this one is not that good. Ah, the factory. You can also find these periodically throughout the world. Now, I tend to crash when I'm here, so I'll try to go through this as quickly as possible. There's our furnaces here, iron blocks. There are um, basic factories, which is like a smelter, like a furnace, but with a Q. There are also chests here, full of a lot of stuff. And less furnaces, so really cool structure. Medium dungeons. A dud. So duds are missiles that have failed to detonate. Now, you can use items to pick them up, but be careful as they do have uh, an option to explode, which will create a thermonuclear explosion. So I prefer not to set this off or farm from it. Very small chance to explode, obviously, but still. Yeah, MK4 antimatter warhead. Warhead, so antimatter is obviously the most powerful one, so stay away from that. Now, meteor dungeons. You could tell where these are by these little pillars right here, and wherever a pillar is, there is a dungeon right below it, like directly below it. So, oh. Yep, there we go. Dungeons are fairly big, and these are only the ones, the only structure which you'll have issues going for.
here. Ah, there are trap rooms which will have Tesla co coils in them. These things have long range. Yeah, very long range. There is a treasure room. Oh, and be careful of the nuclear waste that spills out of these little vats. Yeah, so basically this is just an area for getting materials. Some rooms have traps in them, but are generally easy to avoid. Now there's this one room which like a statue in it with items you can grab, but I'm not trying to find that room real quick. Ah, here we go. So this is like, this is where you get the pocket watch for the euphorium armor. And apparently when you're around the statue, you get saturation and instant health. So... How do I... I wonder if I break it. Will I get the items from it then? Hmm. I think this is how... can't figure out exactly how to grab it, but this is how you get one of the guns in the... Designator... Boom. It'll launch, you didn't quite see it, but it'll launch into multiple smaller missiles, and then fragmentation bombs after that. And then it'll release a giant area of fire and flames, which will wreck your world if you are not careful. So I'm gonna grab one of these and set it so it's right on top of the structure. Now, I am going to use this, because I haven't actually tested this out before, so I don't really know what it does. So let's just find out, I guess. Oh. It's just, uh... Huh. It's kind of anticlimactic. Okay, so the best missile in the mod is the Tectonic Missile. This one, frankly, scares me. It's very scary. Boom. Now what this does is it just creates a volcano that never endlessly like spurts out lava and lags you when you get close to it. So unless you have like a good computer, you can config it to where config use it the config files to config it where if you want to to never endlessly do that or not. But I chose it to do that. But this will ruin your world due to the sheer amount of cobblestone it spawns and just lava that it never stops creating. So. the most powerful missile in the mod? I think it might be a... Thermonuclear Warhead, I think, is the best missile in terms of damage. So let's fire this off before my computer crashes. Yep. Large blast of light, that's how you know it's a nuclear bomb. This mushroom cloud is bigger than the other ones. The earth isn't disappearing for some reason. But I think what this one does is just makes the world like go to this like weird gray color. Basically it kills all life. This is not the way to go. And I think that might be it. There is another one. Let's try a good old nuclear. Because that one didn't land last time I think. Still, you spurting out lava. One last time. No. Ugh. Boom. Where did it go off to? Ugh. God, spawn another one. Huh? Uh. Oh. Uh. Huh. 
There we go. Okay. Yep. As I expected. Now, it's supposed to be strong. Yeah, there we go. This will absolutely decimate an area of land. So, it will also vaporize water. So, be careful of that as well. Jesus Christ, look at this thing. Oh, yep, there we go. Alright, and that concludes it for today's video. Today's video didn't go exactly as planned, but it still went pretty good. Uh, so, if you did enjoy this video, please consider liking and subscribing. And shout out to John Stockton for giving me the idea of creating this video. And if you did enjoy your video, please leave a like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you guys next time. Peace.